What is up guys, I'm Daddy Gamer Fred and welcome back to another episode of Pokemon News Daily, a daily Pokemon show where I go over Pokemon news spamming across all the Pokemon games, including Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, Pokemon Quest, Pokemon Go, and of course, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee Games. Today is Tuesday, June 26, 2018, and we have a ton of news, like always, to go over. Let's jump straight into it. Now, kind of branching off of yesterday's news about the Kanto field research being added to the game, the official Pokemon Go app added a brand new news article to the game, and let's read it directly from the Pokemon Go in-game app. It says, New July research task featured Pokemon originally discovered in the Kanto region. It says, are you ready for more field research tasks and helpful rewards for the month of July? On July 1st, prepare for a brand new set of field research tasks focusing on the Pokemon originally discovered in the Kanto region. We knew this. This is the information that was tweeted out yesterday. It says, complete these tasks and you may be able to encounter Pokemon such as Pikachu, Ditto, or Eevee. If you collect enough stamps to earn a research breakthrough, you have an opportunity to catch Snorlax that knows Body Slam. Now, let me know in the comment section below if that's an exclusive move for this Snorlax because, I, again, I'm one of those people who haven't caught a Snorlax, so I'm unfamiliar with, with its movesets. And also, let me know your thoughts on the confirmation being Snorlax. Do you think it's anticlimactic that after we got Zapdos, Articuno, Motrez as filled research that now we're just getting regular or Snorlax? Let let me know your thoughts on that in the comment section below. I know I'm, I'm one of those players who's going to appreciate this because, again, I have yet to capture Snorlax and I don't know how rare Snorlax is. It must be pretty rare if I have yet to capture it and I've been playing when I was in New York. I was playing when I'm out here in Switzerland and I've yet to capture a Snorlax or yet to even see one. I'm pretty hyped to add Snorlax in my Pokedex, which is pretty cool, but kind of sad that we're not having a Pokemon of legendary status inside of these field research breakthrough boxes. Now, it does note that if you haven't catching the legendary ice flying type Pokemon Articuno, work your way towards a field research breakthrough this week before it goes away. So get ready for a fun mix of tasks next month and go. Now, again, I'm one of those people who is praying and hoping that we got someone like Mewtwo or something like that on the field research box this month of July. I'm kind of hoping they filter in the legendary dogs. Maybe next month they start the legendary dogs, but who knows? I kind of want this filled research box to be my dedicated way to get legendaries. It's kind of cool that they added the legendary birds. Hopefully they do add more legendaries in the future. I don't think this Snorlax is the end all be all, meaning that we're not gonna get exclusive legendary Pokemon this way. I do think that this is them just trying the system out and trying out ways to filter out new Pokemon with exclusive moves, for example, instead of just having it all featured in one Pokemon Go community day. I think again this Snorlax will probably have an opportunity to be shiny because that would kind of make sense a way to introduce this Snorlax a, a shiny variant of Snorlax into the game I think if we have community days for every time they want to introduce a shiny or event every time they want to introduce a shiny will kind of be tedious and by the time we have all of them in the game it'll probably be like 10 years from now so I do think this is a way to kind of speed up that process and give another avenue for them to do that let me know what you think again in the comment section below now moving on on to the next Pokemon news story for today and again it is featuring Pokemon Go. This is coming from VentureBeat.com. I'm going to have a link to this news article in the description below. I think it's a good read. It says Pokemon Go has its most players since the summer of 2016. It says Pokemon Go may not be over the Main Street news anymore. Of course it is on here. Pokemon News Daily. It says but the location based mobile game is still a big hit. The augmented reality title has its largest player base since the summer of 2016, which was during when Pokemon Go launched on July 6th. According to a news report from the market key analyst 
firm Super Data Research. We asked Super Data Research for the specific numbers for both periods and we'll update this story if we get those numbers. Although the game has fell off after the first summer, developer Niantic has been able to build a strong player base with a constant update to the game, including the addition of more Pokemon, new features like trading. According to Super Data, Pokemon Go has earned a hundred and four million dollars in May. This is up a hundred and seventy four percent from the same period last year. Now that is crazy that they earning over a hundred million dollars in just one month. Oh my god. It says Pokemon Go also gets its help from summer due to the nature of the game. Pokemon Go has players walking around the real world so the warmer the season encouraged people to get back into the experience. It says the game was the number four highest earning mobile title worldwide in May. According to Superdata, it was behind in order Honor of Kings, a Chinese MOBA that is soon coming to the Switch as Arena of Valor, QQ Speed, a another Chinese kart racer, a fantasy Westward Journey, another Chinese mobile online role-playing game that makes Pokemon Go the top non-Chinese mobile game in the market right now, which again is a huge compliment to Niantic and a huge achievement to those guys over there. Just killing it like always. Not too much to add on this article, but I did want to spotlight it because it was a great write-up and a great dig that they did. Again, proving to a lot of people who do say, oh, Pokemon Go is dead. Why are you covering it on your channel? And I go, no, Pokemon Go is not dead. It just made a, over a hundred million dollars in May this year. So that, that to me, uh, is one of those people who play it daily and love the new features that they're adding to it. A lot of people have left the game, but also making their way back into the game because of the new features, as well as the Let's Go games. And I'm hearing that they're going to have Pokemon Go integration, where they can trade the Pokemon from Go into the games. They like that idea. They like that feature and want to stock up on the Pokemon now so they can dump into the game. Little do they know, they actually have to get like halfway through the game in order to actually get to that feature. But shh, don't tell, don't tell them, let them find out on there. Now, finally, jumping out of the Pokemon Go news and into the Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon news, we got a little update from the game. The 50 battle point gift for the competition of the 2018 International Challenge of June battle competition is available. So, if you participated at least in one battle within the three days for the online competition, your 50 battle points. Is now redeemable. All you have to do is click the link I'm gonna have in the description. Shout out to Survey.net for actually having this link and the Pokemon Company for whatever reason not even having the link up on their website. <laughs> also, the results for the 2018 International Challenge of June are up. So if you want to see the results for the juniors division or the seniors division for the international challenge, I believe for all regions they're up. I'm going to have a link in the description so you can see the standings and see what Pokemon outranked each of them. To nobody's surprise, Incineroar is the number one in the Masters division with the ability Intimidate. I think once they released that ability to the public, a lot of people were drawn to it and wanted to see how it is and been running with it because it's a pretty good setup for Incineroar to have. And then following behind it is everyone's favorite Pokemon to use. We got Landorus, we got Tapu Fini, we got Tapu Coco, Katana, Tapu Lili, just to fill up the top six. In the juniors division, no surprise, we got the same thing, just with Landorus at number one, Incineroar number two, Tapu Coco number three, Katana number four, Megagross making his way up to number five, and Tapu Fini making his way up to number six. Again, I am not the battle guy. Don't come to me for battle strategies. I'm not doing that here. I'm just kind of go overing it and reviewing it for the news for today. Now, that's going to be it for the Pokemon news today. Let me know your thoughts on everything I covered in the comment section below. Like always, guys, I'm Daddy and my Fred on Instagram and Twitter, and you guys can bring the conversation there. I'm the American gamer in Switzerland right here on YouTube, and yes, I'm going to be doing a ton of videos just like this one. So if you enjoy, please hit that subscribe button. Also, hit the like button. It does help me out a ton as far as growing the channel is concerned. Ring the bell if you want to be notified on the next time I drop a video. Peace. I'm going to see you guys on the next one.